Around one million Canadians are juggling multiple jobs, and one in three say they need the extra earnings to cover basic living costs. A new report from the Montreal Economic Institute says that those working second jobs are being taxed unfairly and that there should be a restructuring to the income taxes collected on secondary jobs. For more, let's bring in the author of the report, Jason Dean. He is an associate researcher at the Montreal Economic Institute. Jason, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. So tell us first just where uh, the sort of inspiration for this came from. You know, you're calling for these these changes, but why now? Well, I mean, it's not hard to notice the rise in prices and the struggle it's causing for for many. And there's data suggesting that there's been uh, an uptick in the number of Canadians who are either taking on a second job or are considering to do so. And so far, the government's response has been limited to sort of quick fix payouts like the grocery rebate, which can further risk uh, higher inflation. And I mean, yeah, it just led me to think about a more sensible and effective solution that's more has a more longer term focus. Maybe that provides some more lasting relief and actually rewards people for extra work and not penalize their efforts for just trying to make ends meet. Yeah, so give us the details on, on what you're proposing here. So the idea is pretty straightforward. Um, we're suggesting a, a reset of the marginal income tax rate for the earnings made in a second job. And so the aim is to provide relief to you know, many Canadians. Low to middle income is our target whose you know, full-time job is just not enough to cover their living expenses and they've had to take a second job. Um, I mean, given that Canadians are struggling with the rising cost of living, it just seems unfair to penalize them to when they work extra um, in order to make ends meet and, and pay the bills. So you're, you're not talking about somebody who works in an executive level job and then is also working as a, as a board member for a company <laughs> and making, you know, pretty uh, handsome sums of, of money here. You're talking about lower and, and middle income Canadians. That's exactly correct, yes. And we were just taking a look at, at one of your charts from your report that looks at the taxes on those secondary earnings. And maybe we can bring it up again just to take a look at it. So this is how uh, things normally or things work right now. Jason, can you tell us a, a little bit about how the tax uh, policies apply to those secondary earnings? Yeah, so essentially if you work, you know, any income you earn from a second job, that's just you know, tacked on to your main earnings and you're, you know, immediately at, the, at a higher uh, income tax bracket. Or you're going to be paying, uh, it depends on the province, but um, roughly, you know, 20% uh, is taken away in taxes for those secondary earnings. Um, in Quebec, it's a bit higher. So, and that's including uh, the provinces and the federal government. So basically, uh, the figures are showing the penalty or how, or how much money you'd have to give the government out of those extra earnings that you're making. Just to, you know, again, just trying to make ends meet, you're gonna have to give up uh, a significant portion to the government. And in terms of, um, you know, getting rid of the, those taxes on the, the secondary earnings, what kind of cost would that uh, be to the, the federal and, and, and provincial governments? Well, the revenue that they would lose out on, it, would, it wouldn't be that significant. For the federal government, it would be just under a billion dollars. And if we put that into context, it's it's not very much at all. They're, the federal government is actually planning to spend about $450 billion this year. And if you compare it to, uh, for example, subsidies for production subsidies to um, one plant uh, in that there's a plant um, that is a Korean manufacturing plant for batteries. The mm -hmm. federal government is giving them a yearly subsidy of more than this amount, of, of just over a billion dollars per year for the next 10 years. So you put it in the context, it's not a lot of money, but the money means a lot to, to you know, hardworking families. Yeah, what what would it mean, do you think, in, in uh, dollar terms for somebody in this sort of situation where they're working a, a full-time job and then that secondary income um, doesn't get taxed? In, in that sort of scenario, what would that mean for the money in, in, in their pocket? Yeah, for the average Ontario worker who would be in this situation, 
they would you know give up about a quarter of their hard-earned dollars they would give up that in you know the government would tax them on that that would translate into about twenty seven hundred dollars um for the average ontario worker again in this situation and so that's you know a fair chunk of change that can be used to pay the rent or pay for groceries yeah, that, that's a good point, too. I mean, even if it's uh, beyond paying for those basics, if, it, if they're putting, uh, putting money into their community by, um, uh, you know, paying for services or that sort of thing uh, for their, their family, then there's also the possibility that there is a, a, a return to the local economy as well, Jason. Exactly, yeah. So, um, you know, if people um, work more because they're getting taxed less, then, of course, there would be offsetting um, effects in terms of the revenue loss through you know, increased economic activity, higher excise tax, sales taxes, uh, et cetera.